Okay guys, look what our mom is back talking about the one way ANOVA and the six assumptions or the six requirements you're going to need to be able to actually run a one way ANOVA. In other words, when you're designing an experiment, once you start to realize what experiment you are designing that will lead you to an actual method. Like I was taught throughout my doctorate years and throughout my studies, your, your research hypothesis should lead you to a methodology. Your methodology should not lead you to a hypothesis. But as you're designing your hypothesis, you should start thinking about the way you're going to go about analyzing your specific data. So if we talked about religion, there were three types, right? Catholic, Jewish, and Muslim. And we know the one way ANOVA will allow us to simultaneously compare all three of this in one model, keeping us at the alpha level or the experiment-wise alpha of the 95% with an alpha level of 0.05. So what are the six things that you need to have to be able to actually run this kind of test? So first, let's think about the two most important things when we design research. We should have an independent and a dependent variable. Most people tend to get confused and forget which is which. The easiest way that I remember them is independent variable, starts with the letter I. I influences, so I as the researcher influence the dependent variable. The dependent variable, D, depends on me. So that's the one that I measure for change because dependent on what I do, the independent or influencer. So if we're looking at the independent variable, what am I controlling? I'm controlling religion. I chose three different religions. So this becomes our independent variable. Now, what do I want to measure about my independent variable? I would have to measure something specifically about them, but my dependent variable, which actually leads us to our first assumption, is our dependent variable has to actually be scale data. And I talked about this before. It should be interval or ratio data, data that actually leads to numbers as results, like age, temperature, not gender, not religion, because that leads to category. It needs to lead to something that leads to numbers, like your age or your income. So it should be scale data. So if we were looking at our dependent variable, what do I want to know about my religions? Who makes more money? Just to make it easy enough. So income now becomes our dependent variable. So in the one way ANOVA, you're going to have an independent variable that is nominal or categorical. It's going to create your three or more or two or more groups. But in reality, it's usually three or more because two, you could do an independent t-test. So three groups or more. And then your dependent variable is something like scale data, interval or ratio that leads to numbers essentially. So that would be your dependent variable. For in our case, it's income. So once we realize, all right, we have our independent and dependent identified, and we have our first assumption, our dependent variable scale, it's going to lead us to our second one. Our independent variable, <clears throat> our independent variable should consist of two or more groups. So does it consist of two or more groups? Yes. So then we have our second assumption completed, right? Our independent variable equals two plus groups. It equals two or more groups. And here we definitely have two or more groups. So we met our second assumption. If we look at our third assumption, our third assumption means that each of the independent variables should be exclusive, right? They should be exclusive observations. Independent variable should be exclusive. In other words, if you ask a person, what is your religion? I can't say, well, I'm half this and I'm half that. I'm half Catholic, half Jewish. No. The person has to identify one or the other. Each observation that's done has to be independent of each other. So every person that's measured can only be measured once and has to be measured in each of the groups. So you can't have a person that's Catholic and then also Jewish because that person was then measured twice. If not, you'd be violating the third assumption or the third requirement of the independent, I apologize, of the one way ANOVA. If we look at our fourth observation, we have to make sure that we don't have any significant outliers. Significant outliers basically means, right? Let me write this down for you. No significant outliers. It means that none of the people that are measured, none of the income that's measured for each person is going to be really outside of the group. So if everyone gives a measurement, let's say the independent variable of the income was 15K to 25K, right? The majority of people, hopefully they should be within this range. 
if one of the persons, right, Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, doesn't matter, if one of those people, their income was 150K, or their income was zero, right? Zero K, 150K, these are significant outliers. These people are going to then mess up the validity of our results because it's going to violate our actually our sixth assumption. Because unfortunately, these people are going to be out there where their income doesn't fit with everybody else's. They're changing the, hom the, hom the homogeneity of variances. They're changing the inside of the group because you can't measure three groups that are significantly different from each other. And we also talk about that if you watch the video of the independent t-test. Each of these groups should be internally the same. Whether they're all chaotic, chaotic versus chaos versus chaos, that's great because they're all chaotic together. Or chaotic, chaotic, and harmony, that's a problem. Because two people, two groups that are chaotic can't be compared to a group that's in harmony. Because this group can make a decision easier than these two groups. So they're not the same. So if we look at the fifth assumption and the sixth assumption, it has to do with that. The fifth one has to do with the idea that dependent variable, which means income for us, should equal the normal distribution. Remember we talked about keeping the idea of distribution in previous videos and keeping normality, that normal bell curve is holds really important for almost all of the research that you do. And so it should be a normal distribution in our dependent variable. When we actually plot all these numbers, it should give us that beautiful bell curve. And number six is what I was just referring to, the homogeneity of variances. Meaning that the groups themselves should be internally the same. So if we look at all of these once again, did we actually make sure that this all held true? Yes. Dependent variables should be scale data. Income leads to numbers, right? It's data that can be calculated and measured. It's not like gender, categorical, it's not a ranking. It's data that leads to values and numbers. Independent variable has two or more groups. We have two or more groups, great. Independent variable means they're exclusive. Each person we're gonna measure only once. You're either Catholic, Jewish, or Muslim. You can't double dip, as I say. Third, independent variable, I apologize. Number four, no significant outliers, which means none of the people that we're measuring is gonna have this huge income or zero income. They're gonna be all within the same range of their income because the dependent variable should hopefully form a normal distribution. Outliers are not gonna allow to form a normal distribution because outliers pull, right? The weight of their income, whether it's low or high, pull the distribution one way or another, making it possibly skewed. And so homogeneity and variances will hold true if you didn't violate number four or number five, because it means that each of these groups are all internally the same and now can be compared to each other. Thank you.